All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's session on uh, eMeet ISDI or ISD. Um, just one second, I'm going to stop my screen share. Um, Bulbul, can you please unmute yourself? Bulbul, uh, could you please unmute yourself? There's a little green button which looks like a mic. And uh, you may need to unmute yourself from there. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, now so you are. Now you are. All right. Um, cool. Uh, so there, there's a few people who are yet to join in. Mm -hmm. um, so we're supposed to start at 4.30, but there are a few more people joining in. So uh, maybe we can wait for another, maybe one or two minutes before we start off, all right? Um, right, just a second. All right. I think uh, Bulbul, we can start off and then take questions as they come in. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that people will join in along the way. All right. Thanks, Dion. Certainly. OK, so I think what we could do is yeah. um, right away uh, to build a context. Uh, let me uh, run a presentation. I think Abhuday wants uh, the presentation rights. Would you be able to give it to him? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Just one second. Yeah, uh, so I'll be there. You could take it from there. All right, so what I'm going to do, uh, Dion, is probably for the next about 10 minutes, uh, run the press 10, 12 minutes, and then probably take the questions. Um, Abhu, there, you can just give me a heads up uh, when it's 30, 33, at about 4.45, maybe, in case uh, I haven't been able to finish the presentation. So, OK. So, um, uh, Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining the session today. Thank you, Dion, for organizing this for us and for the students. I hope everyone is doing well back home. Uh, I'm here representing and talk, uh, here to talk to you about ISD, or the Indian School of uh, Design and Innovation. We are in Mumbai, and over the next few slides, I will tell you about the programs that we offer and whatever else there is to know about ISD. Next slide again. Uh, okay, now these are, well, you are familiar, and I'm representing ISD uh, today, uh, but we are also part of uh, another four organizations of four other schools the business school, which is ISME, a school of advertising and communication called ISD WPP. Uh, we also got a hospitality school called Dice Ecole Hotelier Lausanne. And we also have a film school, which is called DICE Vancouver Film School. And this really is the ecosystem of five uh, diverse schools, uh, from film school to hospitality to design. Uh, the reason I present this to you is while students study at ISD, uh, there is an opportunity for all of the students to also do a, an elective uh, from any of the other five schools. So over the four years or eight semesters, uh, in a manner of speaking, you could do eight different electives from the other schools. Well, often while we, are, we sign up for a particular program, there are interests we want to, we have that we'd like to pursue that is normally not restricted 
just to the program we sign up for. So for instance, if you want to do a module on documentary film making or even a business program, you could sign up for electives from any of the other four schools. Next one, please. All right, now some of you may be familiar already that uh, ISD, uh, we are in Mumbai and what we offer is the program of Parsons in India. Uh, Parsons offers its programs across four locations globally. One of course is from their parent campus in New York. They also have a campus in uh, Paris, uh, in France, and they offer their programs through two other locations uh, that I'm familiar with. One is in Dubai and in India, Parsons offers their programs through ISD. Parsons is, uh, as per the QS ranking, it's a little over 100 years old uh, school and it is it's always been at a number one or a number two as far as, as its global ranking is concerned. Uh, our partnership with Parsons really articulates itself in these five uh, pathways. Uh, the curriculum that students study at ISD is that of Parsons. And so the seven pathways that we have or the seven programs that we offer to students are the same seven that are offered in Parsons. Of course, Parsons has a, a slightly larger a number of programs but these are the seven shortlisted for India that we offer and I'll talk to you about the programs in a moment. Uh, as I've already said this before the curriculum offered at ISD is the program that Parsons offers so it's pretty much exactly the same program that you would have otherwise studied in Parsons uh, and therefore uh, it is possible for some number of some students uh, also to take a transfer after two years of studying in India in ISD <clears throat> to Parsons. In the past, I've seen uh, several students from Bangalore take the transfer, also because many of them have had an American citizenship, but that's not the reason. That's not a mandatory requirement. Anyone can take a transfer to Parsons, and students do take study two years in India and take transfers to uh, Parsons. And finally, for those of the, the young ones who finished all four years in India and at some states want to do a master's program, then a master's progression at Parsons is also possible. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, we'll run, uh, you can skip this over there. So these are really the some of the students in the past that have uh, taken a transfer to Parsons. Uh, the previous slide that you saw was the convocation ceremony that is conducted by Parsons each year. Talking about Mumbai, which in many ways is the uh, design capital of the country. Um, this is our campus, we are in Lower Parel, which this part of Mumbai is also referred to as Lower Parel Innovation District because of a very high concentration of media companies, design studios, uh, news companies, event companies, uh, fashion magazines like Vogue is pretty much in the same building as we are. So this building is called one, uh, was erstwhile referred to as One India Bulls, now One India, India Towers and one, one World Tower. And to the left, if you can see the, that building, the left wing is where ISD is across the fourth, fifth, sixth, and the seventh floors over about 500,000 square feet of space. These are some of the pictures of the campus, truly international. And I would invite you to look at some of these on our YouTube channels or much of this exists uh, on, in the social space. So that might be a good place to look at the campus pictures. Uh, the programs that we offer, okay, now this, uh, like majority of the American design schools, uh, often uh, the pedagogy or the curriculum is referred to as the liberal arts approach to design. It is a T-shaped model where the first year is about building breadth or uh, a manner in which how we think and respond. The second, the third and the fourth year are the skilling years. <clears throat> so these are the seven undergraduate pathways that we have. Uh, as I said, all, the program is for a duration of four years. And the first year is common to each of these seven programs. Next one. <clears throat> okay, now this looks like a complex slide, but I'm going to try and run this over really quick. So as I said, the pedagogy, the first band that you see is the first year studies is is a liberal arts approach to thinking, to, to, to taking decisions which are always sustainable and also building sustainable ecosystems. 
it's about integrate so these are i mean if you're interested uh, beyond if some of them are interested at a later point i can actually go over the exclusive uh, presentation on just what the first year entails because that by itself is a is a presentation so for now i'll right, right. yeah for now i'll just leave that but that to me is the magical year because that transforms uh, a young one into uh, uh, a design professional or a design way of thinking okay so that that is the second third and fourth year when you opt for your specializations a very large number of students who come to isd aspire to have some kind of an international um, experience uh, and therefore uh, if you look at the second band uh, that addresses all kinds of international exchange opportunities um, i've already talked about the 2 plus 2 pathway where the cursor was uh, be there can just bring it 2 plus 2 pathway now 2 plus 2 is when students do two years here and then proceed and take a transfer but what is really exciting for me and i'd like to spend a minute to talk about is the international exchange which is predominantly in the second year and in the third year and the international exchange is the time uh, for students to be able to go to a partner university for a period of 6 months to one year and uh, this is of course largely tuition free and we also get uh, receiving students for the students who take an international exchange so if i am sending a student let's say to uh, hku in netherlands we would also receive the same number of students come to us uh, so this is the exchange program which is really offered in the second and the third year uh what is if you look at the last band which is the yellow band uh, this is the opportunity for students to get their internships i don't know if you abida we can have a, a show up journey of a four year student how the four internships happen if you have any student that would be useful to show at this point but <clears throat> the point uh, that i'm trying to make is that over the four years students would go through four internships so the first one is referred to as apprenticeship Uh, and observership apprenticeship internship and the capstone project so approximately 6 to 8 weeks of internship every time and if you add these it pretty much amounts to roughly about one year experience capstone is the final one and capstone is a point when students do a four months full term uh, internship and normally a capstone is what should convert to a final placement as well next one uh, with the next one uh faculty at isd uh, okay majority of the faculty at isd would have industry experience and are, are beyond a certain level and beyond each of them must have served in the industry for a mean, minimum of about 5 years so for instance if you look at the head, head of department from our product design department he comes to us from mahindras uh, yet another hod comes to us from philips and because we are a school of innovation and innovation is largely led today by technology these are people who have led and done those roles uh, in the industry of course there are younger teachers as well they are the ones that students are very close to normally and they are the ones who have uh, finished their masters and are in between probably uh, proceeding into doing them uh, phd's and at this point are also involved in some amount of research and they come and teach so to your left you can see some of the places that majority of them have done their masters in and to your right you can see some of the places some of the faculty have worked in next one please next one uh, okay so of course um, uh, because okay 75% of the students who come to study at isd are not from bombay and to that extent uh, pastoral care and advisory becomes a very important function uh, all of the students in the first year are allocated a buddy so really is the go to person there's also students council and students stand for elections and are voted for this opportunity and also because we do an exchange program at any point there are uh, a few international students studying so as post uh, school and as post students we are expected to also extend our uh, sort of good services to them and ensure that they have a good experience of the country and of isd and and the people that we are uh, there are clubs there are over 18 active clubs and um, uh, these are just some of the pictures of some of the clubs uh, that students initiate and they are run by the students majority of us as even as faculty would be advised to be members of one club or the other Are you there? Next one. We can go over these faster. Okay, it's time already. Okay, so let's. These are self-explanatory. So 
these are a couple of the um, exchange programs, not exchange programs, these are the summer programs that we do with partner universities, normally in the month of June, July. Of course, this year we would not be doing any of these. But under normal conditions, students get opportunities to do summer programs. Summer school is normally for 15 days. And there are a variety of summer schools, which would be for a mixed lot of students. That means product and fashion and communication would go for the summer program together. Or it could be exclusively for a particular department. Uh, these are all part of the exchange, the international opportunities. Next slide. So I think these are self-explanatory. So fashion week is... Uh, well, for the fashion students, they normally participate in the fashion week. They go for 15 days. One week is participation in the fashion week. And the other week, since we are invited by the host university, either in New York or in, in London, uh, so they also get to attend some master classes. Of course, for those of them who don't have avail of these opportunities in the fashion design department, there are fashion weeks in Mumbai, spring, summer, fall, winter, at least twice a year. So there are opportunities for all of the fashion aspirants or fashion styling aspirants to, uh, to uh, attend all of these because it happens right across the road here in Mumbai. Okay, I think Abhida, let's go straight to the placements. Um, uh, uh, this is the all part of the 50 uh, majority of the partner universities. Uh, if I talk about this, I can talk about it for a day. So we'll, I'll skip the Dutch programs that we do for another day. These are some of the other universe partner universities in the UK. Okay, let's come to the internships and uh, employment. Next one. Uh, okay. Other than that, there are some stalwart series we do every Wednesday. So these are opportunities for all four schools to sit together, or all five schools to sit together, and and attend sessions conducted by some of the biggies in the industry. They may not necessarily be fashion or product or interior designers, but they come from all uh, sort of uh, sections of the industry and on diverse uh, you know, parts of the industry. Also, politicians at the governor of the state. There was some project we did for the municipal schools here. The people that don't really need an introduction. Uh, next one. Uh, these are there. We can run over sooner. So these are all part of the Wednesday stalwart series. We are also film school, so that sort of explains uh, uh, all of them. Uh, these are of course foreign universities. Now much of this happens virtually, but these are the kind of interactions they come for. This is University of Arts London. They come to India for for uh, selection for masters. When students apply for masters okay uh are you there we'll go no i'm not we can skip all this uh, okay let next next one okay uh ISD is in panel as a tier one school as a tier one school it means that uh, the, the hr of organizations like tcs like infosys like uh, cognizant like cisco um that need an empanelment have empaneled ISD. We are empaneled as a tier one, which largely means that it is the first school to go to for hiring. And normally for tier one schools, the uh, offers made are upwards of eight and a half lakhs per annum. Majority of technology companies have become big hirers for design. These are career connect opportunities for students where uh, they're not joining the organization through the capstone. These are opportunities to really say like a career mela happens every December and January. Uh, there are in an online format. There are several of these in a non online forum. We would have just done it once in the year. And these are opportunities for students to present their portfolios to potential employers and thereby get their offers. Next one. Yeah, well, uh, all of last year, all these internships that students have had have been virtual internships. Majority of these are very well paid internships, but paid by far. And these are all the virtual internships or non virtual pre COVID that students and have uh, worked in. So Philips Infosys, of course, is a, is a usual hire or TCS. Uh, both of, all of these tech companies that are presented here normally hire in double digits from SD. So about 12 to 15 students. Uh, this year, we also had Deloitte come, which was a new uh, Deloitte Digital is a new business for Deloitte for uh, user experience, user interface. So we had 12 students join Deloitte, six for India and six for US. So this is really a little bit of web placements by sector for SD students. And as you can begin to see, the technology is taking center stage because tech companies where they were traditionally hiring engineers have to do design job are now hiring design students. Uh, design studios, of course, are the traditional Lintas's and Ogilvy's and 
three Ns and all of those. Uh, of course, a lot, very large number of startups. Branding and strategy mostly for communication design students. Consumer goods largely for product design students. 11% or 10, 11% of students on finishing their program in uh, ISD proceed to doing their masters. Royal College of Art, University of Arts London, Pratt, Rhode Island, uh, and Parsons are some of the more uh, usual choices. So this is really the last slide I have, and we've got about 10 minutes to be able to take uh, your questions. <clears throat> right. Um... Right, cool, Bulbul. Thank you so much. I think it's a pretty interesting uh, uh, option for students to consider, and that's one of the reasons why I said, you know, let's have this uh, interaction with you. So, um, for all the, you know, pa participants here, I'm. What I will do is, um, I'm going to allow everyone to unmute themselves so you could either ask your question or you could type it out all right uh, whatever you prefer please do feel free to ask questions and, and type that out uh, but till the questions come in um, bulbul I, I i just i found the um, the option for students to do you know subjects from your other schools that's wpp or or uh, Vancouver Film School, you know, all that I found very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. What's the response to that from the students who are already there? Are the students taking that? Uh, your existing students, are they exercising that option or do they not do too much of that? Mm -hmm. It's that very sought thing? after. Uh, it's, Dion, it's very sought after. So there's a certain day on which a list of about 60 electives is uh, brought out. So this is a combined list of electives that all the five schools together would uh, sort of contribute. So there will be everything from a module like personal branding to uh, finance for non-finance to uh, possibly even culinary, uh, prosthetic makeup for movies, you know, all these uh, special. Uh, so uh, students uh, sign up. There are definitely some modules which are over uh, subscribed. So students give three choices. They will have a choice one, choice two, and choice three. Just in case they don't get their first choice, then they get the second one. And in case they can't get the second one, they get the third one. And Dion, I get calls in the middle of the night saying that I've missed my first one. Can you push me for the first one somehow? <laughs> uh, so, so it's actually a very popular. And uh, this uh, the portal opens on a certain day for all these students together from each of the uh, five schools. And uh, of course, the design students would sign up for modules and electives from another school. The only thing about elective is that, and it's a full-fledged elective, it's not a touch-and-go elective. So if you're doing a documentary filmmaking elective, it's pretty much as exhaustive as any one of the subjects in the design school in a particular semester would be, except that it is not marked and assessed. So the idea is not really to get into a grading, but really for a certain learning that will enhance your current set of uh, experiences of life and understanding design. So yes, it is very popular and uh, and students have to give three choices. All right, all right. Hi, I have a question here. May I ask? Yeah, go ahead. Certainly. Please go ahead. Okay, I have two questions actually. So uh, the first one is, what is the probability of a product design student to do a, a student exchange program abroad? Um, mm -hmm. So is there a certain percentage of marks that he needs to, um, uh, you know, he needs to obtain in order to do that? Or is it open for all? That is my first yes. question. Okay. Uh, and the second, open, yeah. My second one is considering the current scenario. Um, mm -hmm. I understand that the initial classes will be held online, right? And uh, you mentioned that the summer school this time is not available because of the current situation. So um, what are the possibilities post COVID or even now during this COVID? Because we don't know if there is a wave three that is going to hit us. So how are the how are you managing the admissions as well as the the first set of classes? I'll respond to your first question about product design and exchange programs. So product design uh, is today, of course, majority of the universities that we partnered with for exchange do offer the product design program. 
uh, exchange is most popular in the European countries. Uh, that's because they've got the most well organized machinery for conducting exchange programs. So to give you an instance, at ISD, we've got one international team that pretty much addresses transfers, that addresses exchange programs. But if you were to look at a typical uh, European university, every department has its own exchange office. So communication design department at a certain university in, the, in Germany or the Netherlands would have its own international team and so would product design. So that's because maybe these countries are so small for students um, to get a holistic experience. Uh, they look at exchange very, very seriously. And uh, majority of the exchange programs, therefore, are uh, the, at least my favorite ones are all in Europe. Of course, there are exchange programs in UK, US, Canada, Australia as well. Now, uh, to give you an example, uh, and there are certain universities uh, which do exclusive product design exchange programs. So a typical example would be Technical University Eindhoven. Eindhoven is another Dutch city. It is where Philips uh, is headquartered and was born out of. Uh, and Technical University Eindhoven is uh, like uh, maybe, um, maybe like an IIT uh, for us. So the only pathway that they have in exchange for is the product pathway. So a fashion student is not likely to go to TU or Technical University Eindhoven because they won't run a program like that. Uh, so this is one of the examples of a university that we partnered only for product design program. And incidentally, in India, they've got two partners. One is ISD and the other is IIT Chennai. So product is, uh, I mean, because European countries, German countries, European, uh, the Dutch you know, uh, universities are so brilliant at making and traditionally have always offered a product design program. These would be some examples of where students could. So they can go to as part of a university that has product amongst various other courses or they go to a university like a technical university that only offers product as a uh, standalone pathway for design. Um, so that's one. As far as um, exchange, pro June and July, of course, was absolutely written off given the situation in India. You'll be surprised, however, that uh, I have uh, been reached out by universities in Europe and only last week I've sent a list of eight students to a particular university uh, for exchange in September. Now, all of us are mindful that it may never happen this year. And likewise, we've also got the list of the eight students who wish to come to uh, ISD, right? Because some countries have still not put us in the orange list. Having said so, it is too early in the day for me to be able to say whether exchange will happen this September. Exchange happens twice a year, every year. One is in September and the other set of exchange happens in January. So we've uh, agreed both ways that in stu if students don't make, uh, uh, you know, this doesn't happen in September, then we defer it the, uh, until January and they take a larger number of students for uh, making up for what hasn't happened in September. As far as uh, online is concerned or how will classes commence, we take 360 students. And as I said earlier, 75% of our students come from cities across the country. Uh, a few students also are international. So obviously we will physically have them all come to the campus when we are certain that it is advisable, it is safe for all of these students. And across the five schools, the number is much larger. So that, that things will be uh, perfectly fine to get them here. Also, not just uh, for students who come from outside of Mumbai, but even Bombay students travel by public transportation and therefore it is not wise to risk. So it appears uh, till about a month and a half back, I was quite certain that the classes would be entirely offline. But as I speak with you today, it seems like uh, a little bit of a repeat of what happened last year. So we are prepared, of course, to start online. And whether online happens for a month, two months is, is a little early for me to preempt and say much. But well, if, if if that is what it comes to, then possibly an entire semester happens online. Well, every single design school for the last one year, everywhere across the globe, has had online classes. So the situation is known to you as is, is too known to me. Of course, we are waiting for vaccines for all the young ones and to see how the vaccines really pan out and you know how does how safe it is. So it, right now it is a little bit of uh, wait and watch. Uh, 
hoping for the best, but probably prepared for a similar situation as last year. Thank you. Uh, you how are admissions happening? Okay. Out of my, uh, we, we are actually at the fag end of our admission. Majority of our, our examination happens, admissions to SD happens in two parts, cycle one and cycle two. Cycle one almost addresses over 300 students. And the second cycle, which is really at this point, as I speak with you, is for the 50 or 60 seats. So majority of the students actually uh, wrote the examinations as early as uh, October, November, December. Uh, there is a slight difference in, in the kind of students who write the examinations in the early cycle versus those who write the latter cycle, not in their abilities. And it's just that the students who write early have had several interactions with SD, sometimes six to eight interactions through events like these, through outreach activities we may have done in their school, for school fairs they may have attended, portfolio workshops they may have attended. And in my uh, opinion, I noticed that many students who come early uh, and for whom ISD may have been their first choice or the only choice in India are the ones who've had six to eight interactions. Those who come at a later point have gotten to know about ISD through friends or through people. And it's just the difference is just that they got to know about us later. That's the only difference. Right. Thank you. So uh, that answers my questions pretty much. Just wanted to understand, like when you mentioned the student exchange programs, mm -hmm. uh, will there be a cutoff mark uh, to be selected or is it open for all? It's open for all. It's not on the basis of marks. It's more on the basis of uh, aptitude and attitude. Uh, so that the reason why we send students in the second and the third year is because first year even they're too young for even and we don't know them enough ourselves right that to send them to another country and to see whether they can independently handle their uh, you know life and academics so second year by the time we get to know the students second year is a brilliant year for an exchange and fourth year of course students don't like to go because that's the time they're doing their capstone projects also the universities at the other end maybe three years programs and not four years so I think what is more important than their academic performance, I mean, there's no cutoff for sure, but if someone is finding it difficult to cope academically, then obviously we'd advise them to look at the third year or at a later point. Uh, but more than that, it is really about an attitude to be able to independently handle. Things only get slightly tougher in another country. You have to cook yourself, you have to manage you know, your life yourself. And so to that extent, it's more about some people we feel can independently handle uh, in my experience, I can't think of in more than one situation where I've had to uh, suggest that the child goes the next year and does not apply now because of some um, advice given to me by the department head. And that was an academic situation because she was finding it difficult to even comprehend the subject. So in another country, of course, it just, it's likely to magnify the whole, all set of issues. So that was the only one situation I can remember where we advised the child to uh, postpone the decision for by a year but it's not on cut it's not on marks and cut off uh, definitely not thank you so much professor chaudhry that answers all my questions pleasure is mine ma'am any other right. questions uh, couple of questions from uh, mr sharmila nambiar uh, there are okay so one is when i check online one second let me just mute all right. So she says, when I check online, I see that the student has to do a course in sociology mm -hmm. via distance education to get a degree from Mumbai University. Number one, is this true? Number two, how are the students evaluated? For the sociology program? Okay, the answer to the first one, yes, it is true. Uh, the second one is how are they evaluated in ISD, Dion? Or I'm assuming ISD, right? Or even Bombay um, University? Both. Clarify what uh, what you have in mind. Uh, how are they evaluated for ISD programs or the Mumbai University programs? Oh. Okay, I'll just take she's off both. She's saying the ISD programs. No, uh, no, no she's saying the ISD uh, programs. Fantastic. Well, ISD. The, <laughs> well, if I was addressing students, I'd say the good news is there isn't an exam for ISD. Uh, well, majority of design schools world over don't have an exam so for ISD, the assessments are ongoing uh, when you are doing a project uh, you know in design i'm sure everyone knows this by now that it's the process that is far more important than sometimes the end 
the end is also sometimes unpredictable but the process and the journey and how loyal have you been to the journey you took and how how deeply have you gone into whether it was research or whether it was iterations or whether it was fabrication and how much have you taken the feedback into developing that idea is what we really call the process and uh, design process is actually the most important thing and the process is over a period of time because you've done something today chances are that you sleep over it and tomorrow you may have another idea that you may want to build from what was the seed laid yesterday so uh, the design assessments are always ongoing uh, there is no examination or end term assignment yes there are periodic progress reviews which is more to see how are you growing from you know how have you taken the feedback there are two types of assignments there at parsons and majority of the international schools there are what is called uh, summative assignments uh, and i'm forgetting the word of the other one so basically what it is is there are small assignments which are complete in themselves and summative assignments are when several parts get together to to complete a whole so to give you an example if um, i was doing a project on i'm just taking an example from fashion for now if i was doing a project on women's wear uh, it need uh, or sports wear making a shop report understanding nike adidas what are the you know uh, sports uh, companies right now what are the basic trends in sports wear these are the smaller parts and they may be complete in themselves into a large project or some major project which is sportswear which will have designing which will have pattern making which will have construction and which will have a final garment so there are summative which is as the word suggests summing up so when you sum up all smaller learnings into a large project that becomes a summative project and uh, it's strange but i'm forgetting the name for the smaller projects but the smaller projects also are complete in themselves so this Those is how formative uh, projects i think right Sorry, uh, Dion. Formative, it's formative, formative evaluation, evaluation, right? There you are. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, formative and summative assignments. So, and and the process will be ongoing, and there will be opportunities for you to come back to that assignment at a later point because of some new set of inputs you you've received after your internship, or so you will revisit uh, your project. One of my fa favorite teachers says, "My name is Redo." because every time the student comes to me i am only giving him more and more redo because you want to reflect upon it again at a later point but there are no exams this is how the assessments would be and the assessments are not quantitative it will be qualitative so if you have five requirements from that project and you meet all those you would probably get a base grade like a pass grade but if you go beyond the exercise and you bring in elements that the assignment did not even ask for you would get a higher grade like a merit grade and if you take a totally lateral approach and really really find a path breaking solution far beyond the scope of the you know the asking of the assignment you would get a distinction grade uh, but the good news is in any of these cases the student is no will be aware what did he sign up for so they know that this is the work that has been done at a past level or a merit level or a distinction level dion and that that i i mean i'm yes, ending right. this answer all right all right all right thank you thank you uh, uh just two questions that are a follow up with uh, of the, that uh, mm -hmm. but if they have to do the sociology course how do they fit it into the regular curriculum Ah, uh, okay. Actually speaking, uh, sociology and psychology both join uh, our human sciences. And if you look at the Parsons program very closely, you will find many elements of sociology or psychology integrated into the curriculum. Uh, the, however, Bombay University is not part of Parsons, and it is more regimental. There is a more structured examination for the students to get their degrees, and therefore they have to be prepared for it. they have to be taught the subjects that uh, bombay university asks for of course it helps you in your isd curriculum because uh, another point when i present if i did do get an opportunity to present the curriculum that isd has and we decode the curriculum you will find sociology or human sciences integrated so uh, we prepare beyond for bombay university for all the students to enable to get their degrees by the side 
so these are largely classes taken by people who taught in the university or are teaching in the university and are familiar with the pharmax uh, and their asking of the university all right uh, miss mr nambia i hope that sorted your question out um, now there's a question from nivedna regarding mm -hmm. uh, merit scholarships all right mm -hmm. so for mm -hmm. the scholarships do you do you consider academic marks or just a portfolio um, that is what yeah. yeah so let let's take that question yeah all right okay so uh, dion uh, you know i get calls from parents uh, and mostly from the northern part saying that you know pretty much most design schools have give, begun giving scholarships across at isd uh, i have to be honest the scholarships will not be very large and the reason is it's not an admissions tool it is really an academic tool and we are governed by parsons in that not more than 8% students can be called scholarly uh, for awarding a scholarship uh, because beyond that they say it's, it becomes a discounted fee and then it's it doesn't it's not really a scholarship now how do we see see all these 360 students who've joined us dion or are, will be part of our first year are all have the design aptitude they've all got wonderful portfolios uh, there is they performed very well in the interviews and really from the one who's got the highest score to someone who's probably not got the highest the difference is no more than about 25 marks right that's really the the gap so in my opinion anyone who comes into a design school has the aptitude to be in design school now the only way for us to look at merit therefore at the time of joining is to look at their the past performance and uh, the past performance really a standardized past performance is their class 12th assessment now to ensure that we do not end up with 360 applications for merit scholarship there is a filter that has been made and that filter is the marks that students get in class 12 uh, which currently is uh, 90% the aggregate um, i know that marks of 12th are not uh, out as yet and therefore parents and children have applied looking at the marks of 10th we are accepting that but they can apply again after 12th marks are out so the criteria is that if the cumulative of all your uh, subjects in 9th or sorry in 10th or the 12th is 90 or more you're eligible to apply for the merit scholarship as i speak with you i think we have about 38 such applications once we get this application then we of course look at the portfolio the isd challenge performance uh, cumulative marks anyone's got more than 90 is more or less assured a, a scholarship now what if you don't have your marks in the 10th or in the 12th in the 90s but you are a brilliant uh, design student you can apply for a scholarship at the end not at the end of second third or fourth year but you can apply for a merit scholarship all over again at the end of the first year any scholarship awarded is booked for the entire duration of four years of study of course they must maintain their academic scores and attendance and community work hours and things like that uh, so this is called the ambassadors program dion and uh, this is the merit scholarship so roughly about 35 to 40 students are awarded the merit scholarship every year the percentage varies from maybe up to a 20% the other one is a need based uh, uh, no merit scholarship is need blind the other one is a need based financial assistance for children where they have got into isd may not have got the highest marks but they've got into isd but the family's uh, resources may not be uh, enough to support their education and in such cases we give what is called a need based financial assistance and this can go up to even 100% uh, this year we've awarded 270% as i speak to you so these are the two uh, financial uh, one is of course a merit scholarship the other is the uh, financial assistance all right all right thanks um another question uh, regarding the student ex exchange programs is there mm -hmm. a separate additional fee or is it covered within the semester fee uh, okay uh, the, one of the reasons i'm was personally very fond of the exchange program is actually an exchange student going at least in european countries there is no fee to be paid so you're going as an isd student you're going as an exchange student you may be going to a university that where the fee is at least normally about 
two times, three times, maybe even four times more than ISD, but you are not paying any additional tuition fee. However, you will uh, pay for your uh, travel, you pay for your living, and you pay for your uh, food and other things. Uh, so there's no tuition fee to be paid. And likewise, when a student we, uh, is received here, they also do not pay us the Indian tuition fee. So that is the meaning of exchange, really. And uh, sometimes we get some scholarship on living and things like that as well. But I would be, uh, I would advise you to definitely completely plan the living uh, and food. Now, if you go to a city like Berlin, which is not very expensive, then about 50 to 60,000 a month is your expense on a reasonable accommodation and you know bicycle rent and uh, and um, sort of meals uh, even with little bit of cooking that you can do so there's no tuition but about 50 to 60 thousand a month is the cost of an exchange given that our children like to live in some amount of comfort right they um, they want to live close to the campus so they save time and so that is the cost of exchange. Now, what we also do is if you are holding an accommodation in Bombay and you've taken a, let's say, you know, accommodation in the girls hostel here, then the receiving student, we try and give you give them the, your accommodation. So you're not paying for accommodation twice over. So you're only paying for accommodation at one point at one place. Uh, does that did, did I explain myself, Dion, on that one? That's, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's pretty interesting. That's a good option. Yeah. I think that's a very good option. Um, Mr. Kenny Korean, Kenny Korean, uh, would you like to ask your question? I see your hand is raised. All right, I am not sure. Mr. Korean, do you have a question? Otherwise, we could uh, end this webinar. I think all the questions have been answered. Right. Uh, so I think I think um, there's no question from that side. All right. All right. Soham Sen Gupta. I've received my offer letter in Jan, but haven't paid the reservation fees yet. Will I still be able to join ISD if I want to? We've not uh, offered uh, seats to the waitlisted students as yet. Uh, the reason is that uh, we honestly want to make sure that the students who've got in the non-merit category come first. So if you haven't yet enrolled, you can quickly check uh, with, maybe just give me your details and I will come back to you. I, if we haven't offered the seats, which is quite likely to have waitlisted, possibly yes. If we have, then I'll also inform you. Would I, can I have the student's name, please? Yeah, it's uh, Soham Sen Gupta. I'll share that with you, okay? Perfect. Yeah. Um, cool. Cool. I think uh, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Kenny says he's been muted, so I'm going to unmute you. Uh, Kenny, it says that you have self-muted, uh, so you may need to unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah so uh, one of the programs in uh, ISD is the communication design, right? Correct. So uh, and. Like illustration and like uh, design comes under communication design. So, what are like the different placements that you get through this program? In the communication design, okay, wonderful. Thank you yeah. for your question. Uh, now, communication design is a very uh, interesting program because, you know, if I made a x-axis and I put art on one end, and if I put technology on the other end, communication design is one program that spans from art to technology unlike sometimes a program like product design which is very severely uh, technology and fashion which sometimes can be more art and craft uh, the beautiful thing i find about communication design is that majority of the students are likely to find themselves on somewhere on that x-axis if they are more on the art side they are likely to go to and these are the kind of the companies that I will mention now are the kind of organizations that come to ISD. And I would like to believe also other design schools. So traditional advertising agencies that are looking at uh, people who can make campaigns, who can make ad advertisements, who can handle um, client campaigns like making, let's say, a, Bisleri, a logo for Bisleri or Aditya Birla Sun Life, any of these companies. So they are the 
uh, Ogilvy's, they are the treaties and Ativyas's, they are the mudras, they are the traditional advertising agencies. There are also pure design studios. So the design studios are only looking at the design aspect for even a company like, let's say, Cadbury's, you know. So if Cadbury's is launching their, um, uh, let's say, Valentine edition, what should the packaging be like? What should the colors be like? Is it a limited edition? So they are not looking at um, media buying and other things. They're just totally concentrated on the design aspect. So this is a, these are design studios, and there are several of them here in Mumbai. Uh, an example of would be an Elephant Design, for instance, which is, of course, Pune-based. Then there are larger design agencies like the ones that I named earlier, which don't just do design, but they also do PR. They also do, uh, you know, maybe events. Uh, and so th this is the other kind of uh, places that traditionally design students have gone to uh, work in. Okay? And of course, earlier we called communication design actually graphic design. And even before uh, the initial avatar of graphic design was probably fine arts. So these are the students who are more on the art side. Then there are packaging firms as well, uh, which, uh, which design studios do packaging as well. So that would be the other set of companies. What is also very interesting right now is in, uh, communication design is that the technology has come in in a very large way, right? And of course, everybody is familiar with words like user experience, user interface, and therefore um, students who like to who like to embrace technology. When students come to us, majority of them don't come thinking of technology, but over time they will develop a taste for technology, and it is built into the program, so they get into uh, tech companies like uh, you know whether it's TCS or uh, Deloitte or Cisco and majority of them are working in uh, the UX UI companies or, or, or doing the UX UI jobs or user experience user interface jobs now when I say user experience the whole beauty of for instance of using a uber because you know uh, in three buttons and your cab arrives and majority of us are literate educated but what about the driver who doesn't um, who sometimes may not even have had an education, but he understands where to pick up whom from, you know, all of that. So the beauty of an ease of using an application is probably an example of user experience. Today, I mean, I was surprised yesterday when I saw Motilal Oswal, which is a broking firm for finance, pick up three interns uh, for UX UI. So UX UI is pretty much because we live in a digital world. It has become so embracing that it's no longer just design companies hiring user experience, user interface companies. The first ones were really the tech companies that started hiring over 60 to 70 students of ISD between communication design, product design, and strategic design may have in the last year's batch would have gone into user experience, user interface. So, um, so communication design is really the art end, which is the traditional agencies. Uh, this could be, you know, uh, web design companies. This could be graphic companies. This could be advertising agencies. And of course, the other set of technology uh, demands where uh, I talked about it in a moment. So really, uh, the student may, and yes, you talked about illustration, which is very interesting. Illustration is a very special um, uh, in, oh, skill, in my opinion. I've met one incredible student from Bangalore who was a DQ student, and I uh, met her over several meetings, and she was one student who was absolutely brilliant and cut for the illustration specialization. So that uh, is also a, a more art kind of a bend. And if you are good at illustration, then of course, pretty much any agency is going to uh, be happy to engage you. Okay. Okay, so... thank you so much. So I guess that's about it, Bulbul um, and Abhyuday. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time out to be here, accessible to the parents of DQ. So um, I guess this is probably it. What I'll be doing is I'll be, uh, I think there's a recording going on of the session. So I'll upload the recording onto our, our YouTube page just in case you all need to get back onto this conversation. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Bulbul. It's been a pleasure having you over, and thank you, Abhyuday, as well for being there. Thank you, Dion, for the opportunity, and thank you to all the parents and children who are listening in. Uh, it's a it's a unusual year, uh, so I, all of us 
and i sincerely pray for all of all the families to be healthy and i just hope this is a wonderful year for all of us and for the country and for everyone in bangalore absolutely absolutely stay safe everyone thanks a lot i'll be ending this webinar yep. thank you thanks